Hello! Thank you so much for watching today's teaching from Community Life Church. Open your heart to see what God might say to you today through His Word. Did you know that the human brain expresses only two fundamental emotions? Love and fear. From these two, all other emotions are experienced. As Christians, we're called to live in God's love. But how do we live in love or fear? Humans can have many types of fear. There's the fear of the unknown, pain, death, and fear of choices, mm. just to name a few. When we live in fear, we react to instead of act against our fear. But when we love, we have excitement, generosity, trust, and courage. Love strengthens and empowers, whereas fear weakens and disables. Perfect love like a light, casts out all fear. For it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Many times, our fears can be irrational. It's like believing in the boogeyman. <laughs> the devil causes us to become fearful, but God is way bigger. When we give up our fears to God, we can live a full life in love that He has prepared for us. So which will you choose? Fear or love? Well, good morning. Um, those black cats were trying to kill us. I'm just telling you. They were. And we're actually talking about fear today. And yes, I have an irrational fear of animals. So I feel kind of ganged up on. And I kind of still love you guys. But we are going to talk about fear today. And I wanted to start off um, a little bit lighthearted. Um, how many of you would say that you also have some irrational fears? Like just silly ones. We're not going to go too deep yet, okay? So just silly fears. Well, I did um, some really scientific research that some of you might have seen on my Facebook wall. Because um, all research on Facebook is really scientific. And I found out, I asked my friends, okay, what are some irrational fears that you have? And the first thing I realized is I have a lot of strange friends. And many of them are you guys, okay? I have a lot of strange friends. But I just wanted to read a few of these, okay? So my friend Steven is afraid that a utensil is going to be in the garbage disposal and fly out and hit him, okay? That's an irrational fear. Um, Nicole said that her husband John is afraid of raw chicken. Okay, there we go. Some of you guys know Adam Frost, you know, a big, strong police officer, is afraid of spiders. Uh, my friend Sherry is afraid of inflatables. She said, we're not meant to walk on air. I mean, I kind of agree with that. Um, my friend Abby is afraid of mayonnaise. I can get, like, I don't, not liking mayonnaise, but, like, being afraid of it. I didn't get that. Uh, my friend Marguerite is afraid of putting on bowling shoes, which I do get that. That's gross. We took a bunch of third to fifth graders bowling on Friday night, and yeah, lots of germs. Okay, uh, my friend Jennifer is afraid of leaving her hair straightener on and burning the house down. My friend Becky is afraid of toilet snakes, and then a bunch of y'all chimed in and said you were afraid of that too, and I don't even get that. But my favorite one, this is from our very own children's pastor, uh, Miss Hannah, who's actually in here in the back. Hannah Burnett said... I don't throw away anything into public trash cans that has my blood on it in case a crime scene happens at that exact location I'm afraid I will get falsely accused. <laughs> Hannah, she's in charge of the spiritual well-being of our children, so we love you. <laughs> um, so I have, as you've heard, I have several irrational fears also. Um, besides animals, I'm kind of claustrophobic. I don't like enclosed spaces. I'm afraid of graveyards. My parents told me, okay, that's the only place. No one there is going to hurt you, right? But then with this animal thing, that is probably like my biggest um, irrational fear. You know, some of you have been really sad that my kids will never have pets. And you know how some people like make, um, before they get married, they have to like sign like prenuptial agreements about like property or all their assets or all that. Well, we didn't have any assets, but I basically told Rodrigo like, a deal breaker for me, this is kind of like a prenuptial, we will never have pets. Otherwise, I can't marry you. And so I know you guys feel really sad for my husband and my kids. 
But um, we are going to talk about fear today. And we're not just going to talk about silly fears, um, but we're going to really talk about some of the, the things in our life that we just give in to fear. And specifically, we're going to talk about fear and love. You saw in that video that those are the two primary human emotions, our fear and love. And so I want to ask you to pull out your sermon, guys, if you got one of these. Um, throw that picture up there from our youth. Um, I want to give a shout out to our youth because I don't know if you all know this. They are leading the way in this. Our youth, some of our youth take notes on their sermon guide and they take them on Monday nights and show them to their youth leaders. And so great job, youth. We love you. But pull out your sermon guides because I'm hoping and believing that you came here today not just to listen to a crazy person talk about being afraid of animals. I, hear, I hope that you came today wanting to hear from God. And I believe he's going to speak to you um, and have some things to, to take note of and write down. So before we specifically look at the concept of fear and love today, I just kind of want to re recap and remind us where we're at in our sermon series right now. So we're in a sermon series called The Greatest Love, The Greatest Love, and we are really approaching the different sides or the different facets of God's love, specifically from the perspective of one of the 12 disciples, from the disciple John. John was the youngest disciple, and he actually wrote five books in the New Testament. Does anyone know, what are some of the books he wrote? Does anyone know? He wrote the Gospel of John, yes. What else did he write? First John, what else? Second John, what else? Third John, and he wrote one more. Revelation, yes, very good. Um, four of those have his name in it, so it's not too difficult. But you also have one of these, um, which is just a reading guide. We want you to be reading um, these books that John wrote over these few weeks. So John was one of the youngest disciples, and he wrote five books in the New Testament. And did you know that John talked about love more than any other New Testament writers? There's so much that we can glean from his perspective of this greatest love. And I want to just kind of give an overview of that for just uh, two minutes before we dive in to our topic today, um, talking about fear and love. So everyone say the word love. Say, okay, say the word love with me. Love. Okay, so in English, we use this word kind of casually, right? Like, what are some of the things you love? Like, I love pizza. Okay, I love yoga pants, right? Some of you love the Hokies, right? You love the Hokies. Like, I love my kids. I love my husband. We use that same word for all kinds of different things. But John reminds us, in the books that he wrote, they just always go back to love. John reminds us that God is our standard and our source of love. And so that's why for the last couple of weeks and for the next few weeks leading up to Easter, we are going to just gaze at the different facets, the different sides of God's love. And before we get into our talk, topic about fear today, I was thinking of these different facets and these different sides of God's love. And when I hear the word facet, I think of something that's known as a girl's best friend. What is this? A diamond. My kids asked me how much this costs, and I told them I sold a kidney, and I spent all of your inheritance, so I hope you like it. Just kidding. This was $10 on Amazon. Um, so if you think of a diamond, and you think of... It, what makes a diamond valuable? There's actually four C's, okay? If you are dating, if you're a young man dating someone, maybe getting engaged, you should pay attention. But there are four C's in a diamond that makes it valuable. Clarity, color, carrot, and cut. You can throw that up there, yes. So with cut, that's the way, there's all these different facets on here. And the more facets a diamond has, the more brilliantly it shines because the light comes in and reflects off. And so I just want you to get this picture in this series that if, if this would be like God's love, that we're each week we're gazing at it from a different perspective. We're looking at a different facet each side. And Ephesians tells us that God's love 
is high and wide and long and deep, we could spend a lifetime gazing at the different facets of God's love. And that's what we're doing for these few weeks. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about the side. We looked at the facet of how God's love changes our identity. We talked about John, this writer. Um, His whole identity was changed after he met Jesus. He realized that he was loved. And that changed everything for him. And then last week, we talked about you can be doing all kinds of great things for God and somehow still forget your first love. And I don't know how many of you were here last week, but we just talked about getting back to that first love that we had. What, what are the things that you do when you first fall in love and when you first fell in love with God? And so today, I want to look at another side of that, that diamond, that um, picture of God's love. And I want to look at this side of fear and love and what God has to say about that. The words that we're going to just focus on today are from John himself, and this is what he said. He said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. There is no fear, listen to this, in love, but perfect love drives out fear. And I I just want you to just zone in for just a second because I believe that this is a word from God for some of you today and for me. I believe that maybe fear is occupying some territory in your life that needs to be invaded by the love of God. Can you just say amen to that? Amen. Just that you would be open to exploring, is there an area that I am letting fear have too much space in my life? So we're going to look at the book of 1 John this week and also next week. And by the time John wrote this letter, he was an older man. You know, he had learned a few things. He'd had his fair share of hardships. And if he, if, if anyone had a reason to be fearful, to have fear, it, it was actually him. It was John. Let me tell you a, a little bit about John at this season of his life when he was an older man. He had had to flee persecution in Jerusalem. He had lived in Jerusalem after the resurrection, and he had to relocate to Ephesus, where he lived for about 20 years, because there was persecution was increasing in Jerusalem, and then it started spreading out. People were being killed for being followers of Jesus. And not just people, But by the time John wrote this letter, let this sink in, every single other one of the disciples had been killed, had been killed, had been martyred for their faith. Go ahead and throw this picture up. This is a famous painting of the Last Supper. It's just supposed to, you know, depict Jesus with his disciples. But this was his tribe. You know, we use that word today. This was, these were John's guys. These were his dudes, and they were all gone. He was the last one. And so can you imagine just the fear that that would instill as he's writing this letter? He was not a stranger to hard times, to fear, or persecution. And we're going to read a section, a a little bit of a bulky section of this letter that he wrote in 1 John. We're going to read a section in chapter 4, but before we do that, Um, I want you to imagine that you are there hearing this letter for the first time. This is a letter that John wrote. So the church would have gathered together, you know, they were probably cramped together, and they would have listened to the whole letter um, read in its entirety. And they probably, after they got done hearing it one time, they probably would say, read it again to us. We want to just hear these words from the Apostle John. And so I want you to just listen to just a short section from 1 John chapter 4, and some of these words that just flowed off of John's pen to these believers. I want, this isn't going to be up on the screen. I want to actually ask you if you would either just close your eyes or maybe just look down at the floor so you can really take this in and imagine this is being read to the church from the Apostle John. Okay, 1 John 4, 7. Dear friends, 
Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us. So we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. In verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Okay, go ahead and open your eyes. That was a part of this letter to these believers from John. And I want to zero in on verse 18 today that says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. And as I was thinking about that, I wonder if John, as he was writing this, I wonder if he paused when he wrote that. I wonder if he, he was writing that, there's no fear in love, and I wonder if he paused and just started reflecting on that. What does that really mean? Because, as I said, he had all the reason in the world to be afraid. How could he not be afraid? All his friends had been killed. You know, was he afraid that he was going to face the same death? Or maybe in some bizarre way, maybe he was afraid that he wouldn't be counted worthy to face a martyr's death. And he is afraid of that. You know, who knows, but besides these very real physical fears, I wonder if he had some of the same fears that we have, that you and I have. Maybe fear of insignificance, like what I've given my whole life to, what if it really doesn't matter in the end? Or fear of rejection, what if everyone I love turns on me? Or fear that my worth is in my performance? You know, there's all kinds of fears. Think about some of the fears that maybe you've dealt with or, or someone that you know has just been paralyzed by. Fear of failure. Fear of being too needy. Fear of being weak. Fear of not being loved or wanted. Fear of conflict. You know, fear of death. Fear of missing out. Fear of being incompetent. Maybe fear that God's not actually big enough to deal with your stuff. You know, what, what fears do we have? And I feel like today, as I was praying and studying for this message, that fear is occupying too much space in some of our lives. Can you hear that? For some of us, fear has taken too much space. Where is fear occupying territory in your life, and it needs to be driven out. That's what this scripture says, driven out by the love of God. And maybe you don't call it fear, okay? Like we like to sugarcoat things sometimes or rationalize. Maybe you, you call it something else. What are some of the synonyms of fear? Okay, we have anxiety, we have worry, we have dread or panic, concern maybe. But in some ways, some of us have invited some of those, thi those things to just kind of come on in and just make yourself at home. We've said to fear or anxiety or worry, I have a spare bedroom. You can just stay back in there. And we don't kick them out like they need to be. Kick them out with the perfect love of God. And so we've been okay with that. And this scripture today says no, no more. I, I think we are not the only ones that have maybe struggled with fear you know, over throughout the ages. I was thinking about um, some of the different verses in the Bible that, that say, do not fear or fear not. And did you know that there's actually over 400 verses that say something like, do not fear, do not be afraid, fear not. And I was reading this one article that said, there are enough do not fear verses that you could literally look yourself in the mirror every day for a whole year and quote a verse to yourself 
about getting fear out of your life. And I thought, well, that's one way to get fear packing in our lives, right? But some of my favorite verses, and you can look these up um, for you to, like, take hold of. If, if There are 400 to choose from, but some of my favorite, I just want to read them. John 14 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Joshua 1, 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Isaiah 43, do not fear. I have redeemed you. Psalm 23, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I'm pretty sure God doesn't want us to let fear occupy our lives. Is that, does that seem clear from his word? Can you shake your heads? Yes, if you're awake. Yes, yes, that seems pretty clear. He doesn't want fear to occupy our lives. And, you know, sometimes I feel like our fears are not even always founded in reality. Does anyone get that? I mean, some of these irrational fears, okay, they're not even founded in reality. Like something gets a little hook in our mind or our heart, and then we start to stew on it, and then it starts keeping us up at night, and we lose sleep. And all of a sudden, we realize that we are fearful of something that's maybe not even based in reality. Has anyone been there? Like, I don't know about you, but I've made all this stuff up, and it's, you know, become worse and worse and worse. The more I've thought about it, the more I've Googled it. I'm sure you've done that. You, like, you know, you have a stomach ache, and you Google it, and you're convinced that you're going to die the next day, right? I'm sure you've all done that, okay? So sometimes our fear is not even based in reality. And Rodrigo is actually, he, Rodrigo loves history, and he was telling me um, about this the other day. Has anyone heard of the ghost army from World War II? Has anyone heard of that? So in World War II, the U.S. Army had a special unit that was later called the ghost army, and they recruited artists and creative people to help deceive the enemy by placing fake tanks, like these are inflatable tanks, and they had soundtracks and like fake airplanes to deceive the enemy, to like make, the, make it seem like they had way more troops than what they actually did. And he said this was legit because it was on PBS, but I actually did um, verify that this was legit. Um, but this was kept a secret for 40 years after the war. And, you know, you can see here, if that was a real tank, I don't think those guys could just be, you know, hiking it up like that. But I wonder if at times in your life and my life, are we afraid of something? Do we have our own ghost army? Are we afraid of something that's not even, that's not even real? And we've got our eyes so focused on our fear. And if we would just look at the greatness and the vastness of our God, that fear would be driven out. Does that, does that make sense? That some of our biggest fears are not even what they seem. And, and when we look to God and his love, suddenly those territories in our lives that were occupied by fear begin to be invaded with the love of God. And so I want to just ask you, where is fear occupying territory in your life that needs to be invaded by the love of God? Because my Bible says that perfect love drives out fear. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. Can you actually read this with me? There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. And so the space that fear is occupying in our life is a space that the love of God has not yet fully penetrated. The space that fear is occupying in our lives is a space that God's love has not yet fully penetrated. And I want to talk for just a minute about this idea that perfect love casts out fear. Because what is perfect love? If you hear the word perfect, when I hear the word perfect, I get a little leery. Because I am a perfectionist by nature, and I'm in recovery from that. Okay, anyone else, you're like a perfectionist by nature, and you realize, okay, I need to get into recovery from that because it's not, it's so unattainable. But this says perfect love drives out fear. So what does this word perfect mean? And if you study the, the context of this original word perfect, this is what it means. It means complete, 
whole, lacking nothing. The perfect love of God is complete, and it's whole, and it's lacking nothing. You know, if we think of love, you know, love is a beautiful thing, you know, but most of us know that even with the best of intentions, we can never describe human love as perfect, can we? Can you? I, I mean, I haven't seen that. Even with the best of intentions and the deepest of relationships, that the people that we love and that love us, we still disappoint at times, and we're still disappointed. The only perfect love is the love of God, this greatest love, and that's the kind of love that drives out fear. It's that kind of love. And so that's where, where we want to just camp. I want you to camp this week that the perfect love of God will drive out your fear. And I want to look at one more verse that, that I read. Um, it's just two verses before this verse about perfect love, and it's in 1 John 4, 16. So in, in verse 4, 18, that's where we have You know, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Two verses before that, this is what it says. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. I want you to see we know and we rely on the love God has for us. That's how it drives out fear. We rely on it. You know, during this time that John wrote this letter, there was a false teaching that had started circulating. It had just started, and it would carry on for a couple centuries, actually, after this. But it was called Gnosticism. Gnosticism. And basically what what the Gnostics said were there's only a select few that can have special revelation, that can have special knowledge, that there's only a few that can actually know this love of God. And you know what John says to that? He says, phooey on that. I don't think so. Why? Because John was a former fisherman. He, he was a guy from humble means. Even if you study this letter, there are commentaries that said this letter, 1 John, is written with humble vocabulary. It's not big fancy words in the Greek. He, he's just a regular guy. And he says, No, we can know, all of us can know and rely on the love that God has for us. The perfect love. It's the only kind that drives out fear. And so I just want to ask, what are we afraid of? You know, I'm not I'm not talking about maybe the silly or irrational fears like utensils flying out of the garbage disposal or raw chicken. I'm talking about the deeper things. What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? You know, fears that keep us in bondage and that don't leave any space for the love of God. You know, for me, there there are multiple. I want to share a couple. Um, For a long time, I struggled with being a people pleaser. You know, and that is rooted in a fear that people aren't going to like me or they're not going to accept me. That's a fear. You know, many of us want, all of us probably want people to like us, but some of us have a fear attached to that. But see, perfect love, God's love, drives that fear out because I realize I'm loved and I'm accepted by him. And his love drives that fear out. Another fear that I have is just fear of being seen as as weak. You know, I've always been like the strong one, you know, or so I thought in my mind. But then when things come along and I'm just simply not strong enough to handle them, that's really hard for me. But then God's love comes in and his perfect love drives that fear out because when I'm weak, he's strong, right? Do you see how that works? You know, I, I'll keep going because I have multiple fears, okay? What about the fear, I know I'm not alone in this one, of losing control, of not being in control, okay? How often do we, or I'll just say I, grasp 
to try to control things. You know, control is really an illusion anyway, isn't it? But perfect love can drive that fear out when I realize he's got it under control, even when I don't. And do you see how living in his love drives it out, gets it out of that territory that it's occupying in your life? You know, what, just one more. Uh, what about the fear of missing out? You know, there's an acronym even for that, FOMO. But I'm not just talking about missing out on the birthday party or the dinner date. I don't know if anyone else struggles with this, but sometimes I struggle with the fear of missing out on what God has for me or what he's saying for me. And I second guess myself and, oh, maybe I missed an opportunity there or here or wherever. But then perfect love comes in and drives that out. Because God's big enough to get my attention, right? My God's a big God, and he can get my attention if he wants to say something to me. And if I'm his sheep, I know his voice. And so I don't have to be afraid of that. And so I just want to challenge you. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. And this side of heaven, we probably will not be able to get rid of all of our fear. But I want us to be a people that are not going to get cozy letting fear or anxiety or worry move into the guest bedroom. We're going to contend and say, no, we want more of his love and less fear in our lives. Would you agree with me on that? And, and so as we get ready to close, um, I just want to ask you, where is fear occupying territory in your life? Where do you need a fresh reminder of the perfect, complete, whole, and never lacking love of God. And we're going to sing a song here in just a minute to close, but I'm, I'm kind of a practical person. I mean, it's kind of like take me or leave me, but I'm practical. So I'm going to give you something practical that I want to ask you to do this week. Um, if, if fear is an issue in your life, and probably is for almost all of us, Um, I want to give you a trigger to just remember this week. This week, I want to challenge you. Every morning when you get up, I want you to look in the mirror. And I want you to do this when you're brushing your teeth. Because I'm just going to assume that most of you brush your teeth in the morning, okay? So that's going to be a trigger, right? So if you can put that picture up. When you are looking in the mirror, brushing your teeth, I'm going to say, would you pause for 15 seconds? That's all it takes to look, make eye contact with yourself in the mirror. And I want you to say this. Let's say this together. I want you to say it three times. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. And see, grabbing your toothbrush is going to trigger you to remember that. But real quick, I also thought some of us are overachievers in here, right? I know some of you. And some of you brush and floss in the mornings, right? If you are an overachiever, you can say the whole thing, okay? If you brush and floss, you can say the whole thing. Say this with me, just one time. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. I want you to get that. I know this is silly, but I want you to get that deep in your heart. And we do that by meditating and remembering that. I want to just close. Um, You know, we don't have enough time, I feel like, in our lives to just be quiet and reflect sometimes. And there's a song that we've been singing here for a few weeks um, that just talks about fear and love. And Rod- Rodrigo is just going to sing it over us. And I want to just ask you, just allow yourself to be ministered through these words. Whether you close your eyes, if you want to sing along, if you want to bow your head, if you want to put your hand on your heart, whatever it is that you would be ministered through the words of this song before we pray and close together, so. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I wouldn't be shaken, I wouldn't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love.
my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love shame no longer has a place to hide I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Oh, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There is power, come on. There is power that can break up every chain. There is power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name, power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Just bow your, eye, your heads with me for just a second. Lord, in this place right now, for my brothers and sisters, any of them, and myself, that just struggle with fear, Lord, right now, we just receive the love of God. We stand in your love and we say, fear, get out of here. You're out. And we choose to do that even hour by hour or day by day when it creeps back in. And we trust that there is no fear in love and that your perfect love will drive it out every time. And so, Lord, I just pray that you'd help us just grasp that this week, that it would sink deep into our hearts, Lord, that we would look ourselves in the mirror and remind ourselves of who you are in our lives and what your love does. And I thank you that there will be a deep work that is done in each of our lives as we go out of this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching today. For more information about our church, please visit us at www.clife.church. We look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.